Hey, 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 what's going on YouTube? Uh, as you can see, the title of today's video is Finding Weed in Aruba. And uh, I decided to make this video because uh, after I Googled this myself, just kind of curious what the, the bud situation was down in Aruba, I saw that there are like over 3,100,000 results of people looking for this. Uh, not everybody's a big drinker. Not everybody likes to drink alcohol. Uh, you know, marijuana is becoming more acceptable. Uh, we have more and more legal states. And I know a lot of people when they go on vacation, uh, maybe having a beer, having a cocktail by the beach isn't their thing. Maybe they like to smoke a little spliff. Um, so a lot of people are curious about finding pot on vacation. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, finding weed in Aruba. We'll be talking about where to find it, how easy it is to find, uh, what the prices are like, uh, kind of how to, how to stay safe, uh, have some common sense. Um, and kind of all that type of stuff. And if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below and then I'll try to get back to you and help you as best I can. So um, one thing I'm seeing a lot more people do is just start to travel with pens, uh, you know, hash pens, hash oil pens, those 510 thread pens, uh, the little jewel like pens. Uh, not a bad way to travel. I know a lot of people who travel with these things. Personally, I would probably never travel through the airport with something like that, but I know a lot of people do. Uh, nobody I know has ever run into any issues with it, but nonetheless, if you don't have a pen or if you just don't want to travel with one, uh, you may be looking to find some weed in Aruba. So uh, that was kind of the situation uh, some of my friends found themselves in. And so I just wanted to talk about kind of the weed situation in Aruba. Now, if you're going to Aruba, it's a really, really small island. I think you can travel around the entire island probably within about two hours. Um, but most people will probably be staying in one of two areas. You'll probably be either staying in Nord, which is N-O-O-R-D. Uh, that's kind of on the northern end of the island. It seems like kind of a newer area. I don't want to call it rural, um, but if you're staying in an Airbnb or a house, it's a little bit more spread out. You're kind of staying out in a desert, uh, but that is also where the hotel zone is or the high-rise zone is, and that's where all the, the high-rise uh, hotels are. There's a beach over there called Eagle Beach and Palm Beach, uh, which we'll get to. That's one of the, the better places to find weed on the island. Um, so more than likely you'll be staying in Nord uh, if you happen to be on a cruise or you just may be staying in another area called Aranstead. Uh, I may be pronouncing that wrong but that's right on over by the airport. It's also where all the cruise ships come in and it's a little bit more of a city, a little bit more dense. It's probably only a 10-15 maybe 20 minute drive depending on traffic. Uh, to get from Nord to Aronstead. Now, if you're in Aruba, I would recommend checking out. Uh, Aronstead is definitely worth checking out, uh, but I would also make sure you head on up to Nord. Uh, Eagle Beach, beautiful beach, a little bit less crowded. Uh, Palm Beach is, is a little bit more crowded. That's where more of the hotels are. Uh, but this is the area where we find, wound up finding, uh, finding the buds. And uh, we actually were approached on the street and things like that. Um, I think if you're if you're in some of the more touristy areas, especially if you're in Palm Beach or uh, Eagle Beach, it will probably wind up finding you. Uh, eventually, we did have people approaching us just looking to sell us, but uh, but but some of my friends were looking to grab a little sack, uh, so we kind of walked the beach. Now, pretty much every stand up and down the beach who rents beach chairs, umbrellas jet skis, parasailing, snorkel stuff, pretty much anybody who has an activity on the beach uh, can get you, bud. Uh, if you just go up, strike up a conversation with somebody, um, I would try, you know, there's plenty of guys out there who kind of have dreads and longer hair. I personally would probably try to approach one of them over, you know, maybe somebody older or something like that, but pretty much everybody can, uh, can help you out. Kind of how it works there, especially on Palm Beach, is you'll go talk to somebody, they'll call a guy, um, you know, go lounge on your beach chair, hang out, um, the stuff will be delivered to them and then typically they'll deliver it to you. Um, prices can be a little bit more expensive. You're probably looking, a lot of people were throwing out the price of $30 per gram. Now I know some people be like, oh my gosh, that's such a ripoff. Keep in mind, everything is more expensive on vacation, right? Like if you get a, a, a cocktail or a pina colada or something like that on the beach, it may be 10, 12, $14 for a drink. You're on vacation. Things are going to cost a little bit more. Uh, a lot of people, you know, if you just want hassle free, want it delivered right to your beach chair, uh, you know, at home, it may be what 20 bucks a gram on vacation. It's 30. It is what it is. A lot of people are just going to pay it for the convenience. If you find somebody you're comfortable with and somebody that you trust, you know, I, I would say just go ahead and buy it from him. If you get a little bit more, um, you know, four, five, six grams, we were having people tell us, you know, six grams for a hundred bucks, that winds up being, I don't know, about sixteen fifty per gram, which really, really isn't too bad. That's actually kind of back home prices. In terms of the quality, I was actually somewhat surprised uh, that we, we got bud from, I think, two or three different people. 
Um, you could tell it hadn't been cured, uh, maybe as long as somebody might cure something that they've grown themselves. Um, but it was definitely nice. You know, the, it, it, you know, if you've ever been to Mexico and actually have that, you know, everything down there is just absolute shit weed and they're charging you crazy prices. Um, in Aruba, the, the buds were actually bud form. They were nice nugs, uh, nice fluffy nugs, had some hairs on them, had some crystals. It was actually some good looking bud. Uh, as far as the taste, I mean, it wasn't the best stuff I've ever tasted in my life, but it was some pretty, pretty tasty stuff. Um, you know, because it is for profit and things like that, obviously they're probably not going to give it like a two or three months cure. So it was cured a little bit shorter. The taste, you know, could have been a little bit better, but overall I was, I was really, really kind of impressed. Uh, with the taste as well as the prices. I think the first day we bought two grams for 60 bucks, which is a little bit steep, but it was delivered right to our beach chair. Uh, the dude who gave it to us was a real cool kind of laid back guy and was just very, very comfortable with them. Uh, so we were willing to pay it. The next day we wound up finding a guy who did uh, did six for 100, wound up splitting that with a couple friends. And actually right after we grabbed that, we were kind of walking down the street near Palm Beach. And it was kind of funny, me and my buddy were walking and uh, there was a couple, uh, maybe 10, 15, 20 feet in front of us. And uh, a guy pulls up on one of those fat wheel uh, little dirt bike motorcycle things and says, hey, hey, you guys want to come to a, a timeshare presentation? We can get you a free uh, free ATV for, for attending. And they were like, oh, no, 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 thank you. The guy hops back on his bike, pulls up another 15 feet, comes up to us. Hey, you guys want some weed or some blow? Um, and we wound up talking to him. He was also uh, six, uh, six grams for 100 bucks. Uh, seemed like a nice guy. He actually offered to deliver it to your hotel or your Airbnb as well. Um, I didn't wind up going with him, uh, although uh, my buddy did pass his number along to another one of our friends who wound up meeting up with him later. Uh, cool guy. Um, so yeah, yeah. Generally speaking, at least in our experience, where we were finding finding a bud was, was at uh, Palm Beach. What well, was kind of the spot again? That's the high rise hotel zone that tends to be a little bit busier. I think people go there because they know there are a lot of tourists and younger people. It's where the nightclubs are. People are looking to party. Um, again, you could probably expect to pay somewhere between 15 and 30 a gram. Um, you know, 30 a gram, like I said, it is a little bit high, but it is what it is. You're on vacation. If you find somebody you're comfortable with and you feel safe with them, uh, I would just bite the bullet and go with them. But again, if, if you get, you know, try to try to negotiate, everything's up for negotiation and you could probably get something like five or six for a hundred. One other thing to keep in mind, you know, now with, with marijuana being legal in so many states in the U.S. and, and being very kind of normalized and accepted, um, you know, keep in mind, it's not like that everywhere in the world. And while I do think it, it's pretty low risk uh, buying pot at, at most Caribbean islands in Mexico and things like that, keep in mind you are breaking the law in a foreign country. Uh, keep in mind if you're stupid or if you do get caught, that could ruin your vacation and get very, very expensive very quickly. Um, you know, an island like Jamaica, weed is very acceptable. Everybody smokes pot there. Uh, I believe they've de decriminalized it. Mexico tends to be a little bit more laid back. Technically, weed is decriminalized in Mexico. However, that's not to say that some corrupt cop who, who catches you with some weed uh, won't decide to uh, to give you the scare of your life and extort some money out of you and take you to an ATM. So be very careful with that type of stuff. In Aruba, uh, I talked to one of the gentlemen. He said if the, you get caught growing it on the island, he said they will give you a fine so high you'll be paying it off for the rest of your life. He didn't really say anything about jail time, nor did he really address what would kind of happen to a tourist who got caught. Um, it's a Dutch island, so I mean, if I were to wind up in a foreign jail, I'd much rather uh, do so in Aruba than, say, the Dominican Republic or Jamaica. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, even though it's, ha-ha, uh -huh, weed's fun, weed's legal where I'm from, blah, 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 it is not legal in all these places, and in many of these places, not even decriminalized. Um, if anybody knows kind of the, the legal status of it in Aruba, feel free to, to drop a comment. But, you know, definitely use some common sense. Um, you know, don't smoke around other people. Uh, one thing I will say is there aren't very many cops in Aruba. I think uh, in our entire time there, I think I maybe saw one or two cop cars. Um, it's not like they're patrolling the beach or anything like that. But just be smart. Uh, make sure you kind of get a good vibe from whoever you're grabbing it from. Uh, don't be smoking spliffs right on the beach. Um, and that's kind of uh, how we went about finding weed in Aruba and kind of how you, uh, if you're on vacation in Aruba and looking for some buds, uh, you, you know, you might want to take some of these things in mind. But again, realize that there are always risks and dangers um, doing this type of stuff in foreign countries and well on vacation. So if you have any tips to share, if you've been to Aruba, if you have anything else to add, go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.